Hi, my name is Dr. Frederick Edward Fabella, and I will be discussing priming. Okay, so before we begin, I want to show you a number of slides. Okay, so please look at these slides here. Okay, so I will show you another slide. Now read that question and try to think of an answer. Okay, I hope you've thought of an answer. Now let's look at a third slide. Okay, and now let's look at the last slide. All right, so these are four slides. I will be discussing these slides later. Okay, so what is priming? In psychology, priming is a technique in which the introduction of one stimulus influences how people respond to a subsequent stimulus. So I'll give you an example of priming. When you see the word yellow, which word do you think of from the following? I will be showing you five words, so choose just one. Okay? So have you chosen a word? All right. So, the word yellow. Did you choose banana? Okay, so that is an example of priming. You probably chose banana because you thought that it was yellow, right? But if you go back to the list, the sun is also yellow. There is a cake like cheesecake that is also yellow. Smoothies can be yellow. And the sunflower which is an example of a flower, is also yellow. But you chose banana. So that is an example of priming. All right? So I'll give you another example of priming. Look at these three words, and then look at the word with the missing letter, and try to fill in the missing letter. Okay. Did you choose a letter? What word did you form now? I'll give you another example. Look at the three words again and then fill in the missing letter in the word, in the fourth word. All right. Did you choose a different letter? I'm sure you did. The first one, did you choose soup? And the second one, did you choose soap? Yes, that is also an example of priming. All right. So, how can priming be helpful? Helpful priming effects may occur in everyday life, such as when one or more words in a sentence help a reader or listener to more easily interpret a related word that has multiple possible meanings. So that is one example of a practical use of priming. All right. Are there different kinds of priming? Yes, let's look at them one by one. Semantic priming. So semantic priming involves words that are associated in a logical or linguistic way. Okay, so the example here is when you chose banana, which is associated to the color yellow. Another example of priming, a type of priming is called associative priming. It involves using two stimuli that are normally associated with one another. Such as when I say cat, you might say mouse, cat and mouse. Okay, all right. Another example of a type of priming is repetition priming, which occurs when a stimulus and response are repeatedly paired. Because of this, subjects become more likely to respond in a certain way more quickly each time the stimulus appears. So nowadays, we have the pandemic, we have the new normal. So when I say social, you might say distancing. So that is an example of repetition priming. Conceptual priming involves stimulus and response that are conceptually related. Such as when I say the word car, when I ask you to choose a word from these five, okay, look at all these words. Which word would you choose? You might choose 
motorcycle. Why? Because they are both vehicles. The concepts are similar. All right. Perceptual priming involves stimuli that have similar forms. So when I say goat, you might say boat. Because of the letters, except for the first letter, they're all the same. Okay. Mass priming involves part of the initial stimulus being obscured in some way, such as with hash marks. Even though the entire stimulus is not visible, it still evokes a response. Words in which certain letters are obscured are one example of masked priming. So we gave this example earlier about soup and soap, depending on the priming that you received. All right. So I'm, I'm going to ask you to choose between pairs of pictures. So just choose one, okay? So are you ready? All right, so please choose one from these two. Okay, so have you chosen? Okay, so I'll show you the second pair. Okay, again, please choose one between the two. Okay, so have you chosen? All right. So, again, another pair I will show you, and then you will choose. Which one would you choose? Okay, again, have you chosen already? All right. Now, last pair. Okay, choose just one. Okay, so have you chosen? So, you should have made four choices. Okay, so I am willing to bet that you chose the following. Okay, how about the second? All right, how about the third? And how about the fourth? Okay, so most if not all of you will choose the four pictures that I just showed you. Okay, now why is that? Did your choices have something to do with these? Okay, so you did not even notice it, but I actually primed you into choosing the pictures that you chose. Priming happens unconsciously. You don't even know it. Okay, so it is about creating a bias. Okay, so some scientists have described priming effects as a sort of rational bias where the mind interprets ambiguous new perceptual information in a way that is consistent with information it has recently perceived. So it's a rational bias. Now, is priming used in marketing? Okay, let's look at this. According to Philip Graves, companies have much to gain from recognizing the role and nature of the unconscious mind in consumer behavior. Okay, so imagine that even marketing is done unconsciously using priming. Now, because of that, let us find out what you think of these questions. So reflect on these questions, please. How much of my behavior is not of my choosing? And have I been influenced into doing something without my knowledge? Okay. Have you been influenced by priming? Okay, so that ends my lecture on priming. So if you want to be updated with my uh, following lectures, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, Prof. Eric F. Thank you very much. Okay.